Hello, I'm Brett Hamill, and I am talking today with the very talented sketch comedy duo, Travis Boat and Kevin Clark. Travis, Kevin, welcome. Tell us a little about what you do, fellas. Well, we're uh, um, sketch comedians and filmmakers. Uh, we've made a full-length uh, movie called Steel of Fire Warriors 2010 AD, a six-part uh, TV show called Adventure Buddies, and we've done about 100,000 short films of varying length. Now, watching your films, I notice a few key themes that run through all of your work. Uh, the first is the use of extreme and graphic violence. How did that come about? A reflection of society, as, uh, as you, can, you can say, and, and not, it's not without levity. It's, it's, it's our art reflecting what we see in the real world. Well, I put together a little montage of clips from some of your films. Let's take a look at that right now. No. Another thing that I've noticed is that your films often display a very traditional, almost hyper-masculinity in the roles that you play as heroes. We're taking the, you know, idea of masculinity to an absurd level. You know, taking archetypes and, uh, and re-administering them. The essence of comedy is prefabrication. And drama. Drama, character, prefabrication, and, and uh, guns. That's interesting. Uh, well, I put together a little montage of clips of some of the most extreme, almost bizarrely masculine moments in your films. Let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Patience, Travis? Patience is for pussies and losers. When you get to hell, tell Jesus we said, happy birthday. Which I mean! Tell it to the judge when you get to hell court. Betrayer, seeing you again ejaculates joy into my heart. And all over my heart as well, brother. Good Nahora! Owl like a Never performed a cowardly act in my life, Kevin! And I never will! So we've talked about the violence, the hyper masculinity. Where's it all coming from? I, I, I want to know what's going on with you guys. Let's get to the real you. Well, um, okay. Kevin and I were <clears throat> orphans together. Yeah. In a orphanarium. One year, uh, how old were we? We were 10 years old. Ten, ten. A group of international terrorists yeah. took over the orphanarium and uh, they were trying to, it turns out, get to the, uh, the Nazi gold that was hidden Underneath the orphanarium, but and uh, as usual, oh, thank you. as usual on a uh, Christmas Eve, uh, uh, Travis and I were hiding out in the uh, the ventilation shafts, and uh, as per tradition, we had stripped down his T-shirt and pants and no shoes. Uh, and then uh, Kevin and I were um, we were unarmed. Of course, we were ten-year-old boys, and uh, there was a, a sentry that was placed out there and to keep us from leaving. And, and he was this six-foot-eight blonde German guy, and he had a machine gun, and I needed the machine gun, so I went up behind him when he wasn't looking, and broke his neck. If you have that hate rising up inside you and that and that blood vengeance, you can break a man's neck like it's nothing but a basket of sparrows. I had to jump out of the window, the top floor, catch onto a ladder. It's helicopters, they were trying to take off toward the man's head in half, who was flying the helicopter. You'll never know your own strength until you have to tear a man's head in half. And you'll never feel more alone than when you have to teach yourself how to fly a helicopter. I was fighting another German, the main boss guy, and we were on the 80th floor of the orphanarium. The windows had been blown out. He had his gun pressed to my temple, and uh, he was pushing me over the, the ledge, telling me about how futile 
all of my endeavors have been. And then Kevin comes around the building. I and learned how to fly the helicopter. Commandeered helicopter. Uh, <laughs> the clean light of sight. It was a daisy cutter. I shot it. He cut his body right in half. But the German guy was still alive somehow. The top of his body goes cascading over the edge of the building, and I think I'm free for a split second. Oh God, I'm free! And then his watch is attached to my watch, and I'm just hanging from one hand by the window, and he's is half alive, half, in half corpses, hanging from the other end, and he's laughing diabolical laughter. And then I see Kevin angle his helicopter blades right below him. Just as I swung my arm, the watch band broke, and he went flying into those, into that maelstrom of flying blades, and his blood spattered all over me. I said, uh, Geronimo, sons of bitches. <laughs> it was awesome. It was so awesome. So awesome. That's why we make this bread. Wow. Thanks for opening up. Things just got real here. So, any other projects coming up? What do you got on the horizon? Uh, check out our stuff on funnierdie.com. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of funny videos on there. You can go to our website, uh, entertainmentshow.tumblr.com. And we uh, we do something new every Weird and Awesome with them at Montgomery. That's right, uh, every first month. First Sunday of every month at the Annex Theater. Theater. All right, hey, thanks a lot, Brett. <laughs> you guys are great. <laughs> oh, this has been fun. All this right. Been fun. Thanks a lot for joining us. I'm Brett Hamill, joined by Travis Vogt and Kevin Clark. We'll see you next time. Things just got real here.